Fantastic. Think a lot. And we are finally live. Hey, everybody. I am Haley Gray. I'm the founder of the Women's Entrepreneur Network. This is my dear friend, Tori Bentley. And tonight, we're going to be talking about why do we choose to do things the hard way? Because yeah. I see so many people, not just business owners, people, everybody who make things so incredibly difficult, so incredibly overcomplicated, overdone, you know, and it's expensive and it's time consuming and we don't get where we need to be to be making money in our businesses or in our lives. We just introduce all this extra complication and stress and frustration, and anxiety and all the things. So, well, yeah. I agree with that. And as a lawyer, boy, oh boy, have I seen a whole lot of that. Um, but then again, if right? people could uncomplicate their lives, they wouldn't have been in my office. Um, I think that yeah. there's often, uh, let me, let me say this. I have a friend who's very bright and very educated and everything is always a drama. Everything is always mm -hmm. a crisis. Everything is always complicated. And um, when, when I look sort of cross-eyed, when I'm hearing the story, I get a comment like, well, you just wouldn't understand. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think that really means that I I can't justify uh, the the favorite phrase that I have given this person, which is "when in danger, when in doubt, run in circles, scream and shout," which is the way so many people approach approach things. Yeah. Um, why do we choose to make it more complicated? Well, gee, I'm a very important person, therefore things are complex. Um, and, they have oh, to be complex in order to be worth doing, right? They have right. to be complex, expensive, difficult to achieve in order for it to be worth it, right? Right. And for me to feel like I'm a better person than someone else, oh, you wouldn't understand. This is above your ability. To, you know, I'm, I'm special. Therefore, everything is complex. And I think yeah. more about this and I think... Well, that's kind of horrible. That's, but I think people do it sometimes knowingly and sometimes not. And I think uh, a self-absorbed narcissistic world often, um, Velma just said, crisis distracts us from our feelings. Well put. That, it does. You know, oh, I'll, I'll deal with it later. Um, I have, uh, Velma is so right on with something. I had a mother who was in a very, very bad marriage. And she would say things like, well, I'll see the lawyer when I get your brother off to boarding school. And then, it, well, I've just got to get him to graduation. I got to get him settled in his first year of college. Well, let's get him graduated. And he's getting settled in a new job in a new apartment. And so um, mm -hmm. she died instead. And uh, because instead of facing things head on and saying, what can I fix? What can I fix? What do I have control over here? Which is mm -hmm. me and definitely not you. What do I have control over? And then how do I go about taking care of it? And if mm -hmm. it's complex, then let's make it into bite-sized pieces that we can manage and take care of one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. People don't usually choose that. Why is that Haley? Well, I think it's a form of self-sabotage, honestly. It is a very elaborate, very intricate form of self-sabotage. You know, if I make it hard enough and enough steps and difficult enough to achieve, then it'll be worth it when I get there. Then I will have arrived. And I think it's a really interesting thing because you're preventing yourself from ever arriving at that destination in many cases. I see it with people with social media frequently. I see it with people who are, you know, maybe writing copy on a website. I see it sometimes with people when they're like doing a marketing plan. They'll stop and they'll, they'll start and they'll stop and they'll start and they'll make it take like forever when we could do something relatively simple 
get it done, get it delivered, get it out of here. And that's an important thing. But it, I think it's just a really interesting form of, you know, you know, we mess with our brains, um, you know, we're just screwing with our brains, we're messing with our brains. And we're tying ourselves into these little gumby knots to make things really, really complex and really complicated, because of course, it has to be that way. And, you know, it's interesting how much extra energy we expend. I say we because I've done it too, you know, trying to get things done. And one of the things I've had to start realizing is that I'm a pretty fundamentally lazy person. And a lot of people will. You are so full of it. You are so. But a lot of people will be like, "Oh my gosh, you're one of the most highly productive people I know." And and you're telling me, "Yeah, I'm, I'm full of it, right?" If I say, right. you know, I am fundamentally a lazy person. Yeah. And I'll tell you why I'm fundamentally lazy. Okay, tell me, and then I'll tell you you're full of it. But go ahead. And yeah, you can tell me I'm full of it, right? But I mean, seriously, I get stuff done enough with my social media and I get it done and it's done. It's done enough. I do these lives. I don't go back and do post-production and I don't do all those things. I go on, I do a live and I let it go. And I'm going to eventually monetize my YouTube channel. Is it taking me longer? Yes, but done is better than perfect, right? If I'm doing a website for a client, here's the thing is I get it done. I get it done right the first time. I'm working on a website right now that no joke, I am the fourth developer who's worked on it. And y'all that don't know me super well don't know that I'm a software engineer with 25 years of experience and my business is doing digital marketing, right? So when we get a really gnarly, nasty website in, a lot of times I'm the one that gets to deal with the gnarly, nasty website because I want to make sure that it's done correctly the first time. And it's kind of both a control thing and a, I don't feel like dealing with this thing for the next 12 months or however many months and dealing with a frustrated, unhappy client. And Velma, I agree. I like simple and effective. I like getting stuff done, cutting through the nonsense and through the weeds and just hack and slash and make things happen, which means that things aren't always perfect in my world. They're well, just done. A couple of things. I think you need a new dictionary to look up lazy because you ain't it. Secondly, um, why sacrifice the good in pursuit of the perfect, which so mm -hmm. many people do, and then screw everything up? And the third thing is the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. What I hear you saying is I'm opting for the straight line, get it done, get it done right. You have standards, get it done right and move on to the next project. Yeah, absolutely. That lazy. That's just a, a low threshold for drama. I don't want the nonsense. I want it done right. I mm -hmm. want to move on to the next product because project, because I'm bright and I don't want to get bored. So, mm -hmm. you know, keep bringing something new in, but um, I'm going to have to look up the word lazy while we're talking, because uh, unless I'm mistaken, uh, you've got some, bizarre description unwilling to work or use energy okay I, am, I will say i am completely unwilling to use excess energy to do anything and i will say also my kids think i'm the laziest thing ever because well, i make them fetch and carry kids. all my stuff on my drinks just seriously five second commercial here just everybody just five uh -huh. seconds okay um Kid, kids are lazy because their parents do everything for them. So I wouldn't take a kid's description of lazy for anything, just saying. Um, but I think that what you're describing is a fair amount of wisdom, that you have seen what's good, you've seen what's bad. And I have worked with website developers who are in pursuit of the perfect. And what that means is it costs 10 times as much and takes 10 times as long. And, and never gets developed. It never gets done because it's never perfect. And they never, I had a, I had a secretary in my office and the measuring stick for me was my husband and I went on a two week vacation and mm -hmm. I came back and she was still working on the same letter. 
there's something wrong with you. If mm-hmm. you cannot, and you'll see people like that. They're, they're always fidgeting. They're always looking for the right word. They're always, and, and that's fine if you're a self-employed author and, and you're a wordsmith and you're trying to get the right turn of phrase. I get all that, mm-hmm. but we all have deadlines and we all have clients and we all have projects and we all have, you know, dinner's got to be made and the pool's got to be cleaned out. And today, you know, okay, you're looking at pool hair here today. I didn't get my hair done because I spent half the afternoon after a consult at lunch, I spent half the afternoon trimming hedges. And I mean, box well, this is the, box it's 95 box. degrees outside or a hundred degrees outside, right. hot and humid. And Sorry mm-hmm. guys, I just walked the dogs. And this is what my hair does. I have curly hair and it mm-hmm. freezes in this weather. Here we are. Here, Here we, we are. are. Floofy, floofy. Yep. I feel kind of like the poodle right now. but That's right. Me too. But back to the concept. I think anybody who approaches it the way you and I are talking about it is get the best project done you can and move on. That's yeah. an intelligent way of doing business. Because otherwise, you're going to sell one widget a year and you're not going to be able to feed your kids. So. Absolutely. And the other thing too, is you do have to remember that, you know, that shortest, you know, path between two points is a straight line. Now, sometimes it's going to take you some preparation to create that straight line. You know, I may have to pull out dynamite to create the tunnel to get that straight line. But one of the things that I find with a lot of business owners. And I see this as kind of an interesting form of procrastination of, you know, you have to evaluate how often am I going to go around the bend and back versus is, is it worth it to pull out the heavy digging machinery and the dynamite so that I can go straight through because I'm going to go back and forth amongst this path 23 times or thousands of times, right? So you have to be smart enough to know when to pull out the heavy digging machinery because you don't want to keep going over that mountain pass and around the bend 5,000 times. And being smart about that, I, I think, is one of the hardest things in business because that, you know, pulling out the heavy digging, you know, excavation machinery and the dynamite and going through the mountain to create that tunnel is hard work you know, when you're building the tunnel, but then after that, you have the tunnel to go through over and over again. And I mean, one example I can think of with this is setting up systems and processes in our businesses. And I see it a lot with people where they're not keeping track of who they're talking to or when they're talking to people and there's no automation, there's no follow-up, there's no way. No good CRM with a note keeping function and a sales page and a, yeah. Right. Any of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we've had these, and we've had these conversations in the past about processes and documenting processes. Well, the first time you put that CRM in place and you document the sales processes, you're going to get blowback from the sales team. Oh boy. And they're not going to want to use it and it's going to be too hard. And it's going to be, it's going to be like pulling out that heavy machinery Mm -hmm. and doing stuff. And you're probably going to have to make an investment here. It's going to be time, money, effort, energy, and you've got the blowback from your team because they're in a, they're in a royal snit over having to do the whole thing. Because it's not the way we've always done it. Right. But it's also not their company. Right. It's like, this is how we do things. And this is the best use of our money and time. And we have to have an accountable system. And if I get hit by a bus, you've got to be able to go in and see what the last mm-hmm. thing we did and where the notes are and where the tools are and where the tunnel is. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I think we forget a lot of times is, you know, sometimes, yeah, we may choose to keep going around the bend a few times because we only tra- traverse that path once a year or once ever in our business. So of course, we're going to take the Rocky Mountain over, you know, the pass. But if it's something that you have to keep doing over and over and over again, you know, the simple, the easiest way to go forward is actually to incur the pain and the expense and the training and the effort up front to figure out the CRM and the funnel and the pieces and the parts 
to get there and do it. Now, one of the things I do want to, you know, caution people on is, you know, you can over invest in building the most perfect tunnel, right? If you can get through the tunnel and it's the right size and, you know, it functions well, then that may be the, the, the only tunnel you need. It but doesn't have back to, to be my original statement. Don't sacrifice the good. You know, yeah, it doesn't it, need it, to be, you know, eight lanes wide, you know, right. with, you know, two, two passes, especially, you know, if you've got this, you know, little dinky, you know, two lane road on either side of it. Yeah. Don't sacrifice the good for the perfect. Right. And I know that this is a totally ridiculous analogy in some ways. On the other I don't hand, I mean, I see it over and over again where people really do struggle. And I see a lot of business owners who really struggle because they haven't documented the processes and they haven't put the pieces and parts in place in their business. And this is a lot of what I do. So they got to do it over and over and over again. And it's a waste of time and money and talent. Absolutely. Right. Right. But mm -hmm. I, I also liked the, the, the turn of phrase go around the bend because that's what's going to happen to us if we don't have some order and some processes in place. Well, and the other thing too that you have to remember is that the amount of time it takes you to go, you know, across and around and over the mountain is what you're having to do every single time you're doing that with a client, right? Oh, I'm having to recreate the path and, you know, pull out the machete and, you know, knock down all the weeds every single time I go back and forth between a client that gets really cost prohibitive and really, really expensive. If you're having to reinvent the path and you're having to find the path again, you know, it's, it can be really painful. And the point, this points to where sometimes it's good to delegate to someone else when it's their zone of genius. Yeah. Hiring the right person to get the right bits and pieces in your business um, and hiring the right expert can be, transformational and getting processes in place. Absolutely. And another way, and maybe we're saying the same thing, but something that I think about because I'm real type A, you know, and oh, yeah. I, you know, that's just the way a lot mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs are. I'm, I'm wound tight and, you know, I know what I like, know what I don't like, go, 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 you know, whatever mm -hmm. did that. albeit I'm retired, but I think, and, and with, who I am, I'm a very big picture oriented person. I have paid people in my career to be the extreme detailed person, to make sure that Absolutely. that paper is filed. And I think there's room for both. I don't think one is better than the other. I think you need both. I think you need to have people with vision and the idea and, and the guts to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And then you need people who will take care of the details and, and make sure the stamps on the envelope. Um, and that the envelope is actually addressed every single time it goes out, right? Right, right. And it's, and, and it's, and it's even things like, okay, is your invoicing going out on time every time? You know, do you have Mark in the back who's sending out invoice from reminders or whatever? And yeah, you can't have kind of one without the other, but it's definitely a process of defining what is your easy and what is your hard and being smart about where you're making your investments and asking yourself the question, you know, am I making this unnecessarily difficult? Am I making this unnecessarily hard on myself? And a lot of times I get people who come to me, honestly, to do websites and I'm the fourth person who's worked on the website because they've made it unnecessarily difficult on themselves because they've tried to be cheap and they don't understand that sometimes, you know, I've hired somebody that was cheap and then I hired somebody to fix it and then I hired somebody to tweak it and then I t hired somebody to bolt something onto it and then it gets to me. And this is where the buck stops, right? And this is where I say I'm kind of lazy because I'm like, okay, we're going to stop with the crap. And, you know, we're going to go back and figure out what the heck this thing is supposed to do, this website, this SEO, this ad campaign, all of it. Because believe it or not, I won't just do ad campaigns for anybody. And, you know, 
go back and figure out, is this going to even have the potential to work in the first place? And does it meet our requirements? Um, and go from there. You know, and sometimes it's like taking multiple clicks out of an e-commerce site. This is a night of cliches. And you bring up a point that has has crossed my mind a thousand times of late, and I, I don't want to get into the particulars. Um, the concept of being penny wise and pound foolish. Oh, well, if I do it this way, it will save me, you know, 25%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it won't be right. And you'll need somebody to fix it. And you're going to have to go to somebody else. And by the time it's over with, you've invested fortunes, fortunes. And I, I have back and that, that was one comment. Here's and my, not just comment. fortunes, but years of time. elapsed time and, to and try lost to business. get it. Exactly. And the lost business because you can't get the blinking thing to market. And, and if you guys think I'm picking on any one person, know that Vicki and I are not picking on any one person. We have a, like long shared connections and many conversations about this. Like years of conversations. Years of conversations about, oh my gosh, you can't get the blinking thing to market. So you can't sell it. And yeah. And when yesterday's gone, you're not going to get that money back. Um, no, and you're not going to get your time back. The fine, fine, quickest way to get something done is to give it to a lazy person. <laughs> and she says, should we really give it to a simplify person? Yeah, absolutely. Simplify it as quickly as you can. And I mean, this is one of the things I used to deal with in corporate because they were like, how do you get so much stuff done? And I'm like, because I don't run around in circles trying to get stuff done. I get stuff in the buck stops here and it goes right back out. And yeah, I probably don't even look like I'm moving because I'm just like hit the enter button and make run the test and be done with it. And I get, as people would say, I kill the proverbial monkey because I get rid of things as soon as they come in. Because I know that those little monkeys grow up to be big old hairy silverbacks and I don't wanna deal with them. Um, and it's just a phrase that I've heard from somebody else, but it's like, you got rid of stuff as quickly as you can. Yeah. So My husband know. always had a clean desk. Uh, at the end of the day, his desk was spotless. He mm -hmm. took care of things. If it wasn't finished, it was in a file with a note of exactly what needed to be done at seven the next morning. But since we're on the subject of cliches, I want to go to another one, which is my my favorite Clint Eastwood cliche, which is a man or a woman. It's got to know her limitations. Absolutely. And if this isn't your gig, then you hire someone. And back to this isn't about you out there, but this is about someone in particular who I know well, who has worked 80 hours a week for 30 years. Ouch. Has saved every dime, um, has never gone on vacation, has never bought a nice car, has, um, okay, you're getting the picture. And the goal was, I want to save money and retire. I want to save money and retire. Well, in the process of all this working, you really didn't get to know your family and mm -hmm. you never spend any time with your wife. Oh, okay. Well, you're divorced now. And one of your children doesn't talk to you. Oh, and all that money, half of it is gone in the divorce. And it's the loss of the big picture. And mm -hmm. this person's very good at detail. And this is the person you go to when you need a problem solved. But even now, to get the concept across, do you know what this has cost you? It's still 80-hour weeks. Oh, I really don't want to hire another person. It's going to cost me blah, blah. And I, I think mm -hmm. yeah, people shoot themselves in the foot. They, they, we do. And I think some of it is, is guilt. You know, it's my job to provide. It's my job to work hard. It's, you know, all that stuff. Well, and the other thing that happens too, and I'm going to throw this out as a devil's advocate, as somebody who has a team and who has hired people in the past, I've been burnt. Oh, 
Me too. Burned big time, right? So there is definitely a point where you're like, bleep this. I'm going to just do it myself so I don't have to deal with bleepity, bleepity, bleep incompetent people. And sure, I may have to work more hours, but at least my clients aren't getting screwed. And at least I'm not getting screwed paying bills for people who didn't actually do the work that I paid them to do in the first place. And then I had to go back and but pay for it three times or do it. Got to invest in Absolutely. People. You have to. And and maybe your business, not you, Haley, but Sally Sue out there, Billy Bob, maybe your business isn't at a place where you can hire someone. But even even if it's not a peer, if it's a, a support person, you have to invest in in doing this intelligently. And mm -hmm. if you're just for those of you oh, old yeah. enough to remember the Ed Sullivan show. And this Italian troupe that came on and they had long sticks and they were just spinning plates on the sticks until they, and they would pass the sticks around. And eventually, you know, you throw up another stick and another person, you ran out of hands, you ran out of sticks and everything came crashing down. You can only manage spinning plates for so long. And then you either drink yourself to death or you end up in a psych unit or you end up divorced or you end up with your kids not talking to you. And a lot Absolutely. of really successful, especially men, a lot of really successful men I've known in my lifetime, and, and I'm older than perhaps a lot of our audience. You know, I grew up in the Mad Men era, you know, the, my, the, my parents grew up in that generation of three, four cocktails before dinner every night, and dad never ate with the kids, and he was working all the time, and he was never home, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That kills you. And, and and you take a lot of people with you no, when absolutely. you live that life. And, and, you know, maybe it's worth it to you. I don't know. It's not my business how, how you choose to do it. But I don't see that working successfully. You have to have a team. And if you're married to someone where you have uh, an arrangement of like, okay, you go out and do the 80 hours. I'll mind the home front. I'll raise the kids. I'll do all this. But, but. There's got to be, you know, this vacation. There's got to be mm -hmm. Sunday church. There's got to, whatever, because you can't sustain relationships and you can't sustain working like that. It'll just make no. you crazy after a while. And people make it really hard for themselves. They, they choose do. the complicated and then, you know, the the cost of complicated, the price of a divorce, um, you know, the cost of lawyers. It's it's is it worth it to you is it so well hey we're just full of good thoughts here right yeah how, how are you well and that's part of the making it overly complicated piece right you know that's that's the price mm -hmm. of overdoing it and not simplifying and you know mm -hmm. that can be your health i know that I got an ultimatum from a doctor a few years ago about you either have weight loss surgery. And I, that was, that for me was a wake up call or you're going to die. Um, or, you know, there's definitely times where you have those wake up calls that you're like, Oh, this might not maybe be the best choice. Maybe I need to simplify and quit doing things so hard on myself. My kid brother had open heart, had quadruple bypass two months after his 50th birthday. And that was his wake up call. But I will say, and he's someone I admire very much. He is the only person I've ever known who has had that happen to him where he really altered his life. Everything changed after that. And, you know, it's been, how old is he? Yeah, it's been eight years. And the food is different. The exercise is different. The lifestyle, the work hours, all of it is different. Mm -hmm. And not many people are able to take the wake up call. Yeah, you know, they, they kind of slip back into it. Look, okay. You talked about weight loss surgery. Look at how many people put the weight back on, you know, yeah. that it's hard to shake old habits. Oh, absolutely. Because the, the weight loss surgery is just a tool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's about, right. right. It's about changing your habits. And as this conversation started, it's about 
making things simple and not making things overly difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Velma has a good point. Look at the emotions and behaviors that are not serving you. You'll find the beliefs that you didn't realize you have. Absolutely. Oh, that's a very good point. Velma, and we do have to tonight. take that moment to look in the mirror and say, okay, so why is this not serving me? What am I doing here? Sometimes it's see, what am I doing and why am I in this handbasket? You know, and I think that we do have to really analyze what we're doing and how we're doing it and get to where we need to go. And I think it all starts with what do you want? You know, yeah. what are you willing and what are you willing to give up? You know, if you want this, what are you willing to give up to get it? And I don't know how many people. Um, I look at the difference in lifestyles today from when I was a kid and gosh, people have a TV in every room today mm -hmm. and families have a whole lot of cars and things mm -hmm. that complicate your life, extra houses, extra cars, um, lots of travel, all of that stuff takes money. And then all of a sudden that takes a couple of incomes. I heard a terrifying statistic this week. That was, are you ready for this? Are you ready? Of all the one percenters in the United mm -hmm. States, 80% are living paycheck to paycheck. That's kind of terrifying. Isn't that but terrifying? not terribly surprising? I was surprised. I was surprised. Not well, you know, in, 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 you know, you you've got a you've got a lifestyle and you're doing a business, and that means you've got to be a member of this club and you've got to join the club in the city and you've got to do this trip and you and all of a sudden you're writing a whole lot of checks and I get mm -hmm. it, but at what and price? allowed your yeah your consumption to exceed you know meet or exceed the what paycheck. you're doing the pay pay and i mean i see it a lot in the tech industry i mean i saw it a lot when i was working in corporate and you know i i come from the height from a very high tech background and yeah people do spend you know all 200k a year that they're making trying to keep up with the Joneses with the latest toys and the latest knickknacks and the latest stuff. And y'all, I'm a troglodyte. I'll tell you, I've got a cell phone and my husband and I were talking this week and I'm like, but I like my old XR cell phone because I, you know, it's paid for and I don't, you know, it works 98% of the time doing exactly what I want it to do. And you know, and we you remember when cell phones lasted were... many years instead of two, which is how they yeah. are. Yeah, well, I'm at like four or five right now. But, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, I see it with a lot of people where they're, you know, and a lot of my former colleagues, you know, new cars every three years and this and this and this and this and this. And of course, you know, those are the, the one percenters. And it, it does really stress our lives so much because we're not saving and we, you know, don't have as many choices available to us. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other conversation for a whole other time. It sure so, is. But this like was a, a good one. For next week. This has been an awesome one. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, and thank you Velma for all your good comments. And I look forward to seeing you again next week and speaking to you and enjoying the summer and, um, Blessings to you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Talk to you soon. Take care.